Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the deadly flatworm, Planaria. Now, no, not all flatworms are deadly. I'm talking about the ones with the little beady eyes and the arrow-shaped head. These guys are the killers. So you don't need to be too worried if they've got a nice rounded head and no eyes or anything like that. Those guys are safe. They're probably just Dietrich worms. I'm talking about these guys up here. You can see the arrows on their heads. I probably can't zoom in enough for you guys to get their eyes, but if you look closely enough on them in person, they've got these two little tiny eyes right at the tip. However, on camera, you can easily see the little arrowhead now, these guys got in with this plant. I bought this Anubis at one of our fish club meetings. I got home late and decided that I wasn't gonna dip it. I was just gonna throw it in the tank and it ha if it happened to bring in something I didn't want, it was fine because I was gonna do a video on it. And then not only that, but I've been throwing plants in the tubs outside trying to get them there and we've got enough there, but I wanted some inside that I could get a nice close-up view to show you guys exactly what you should be worried about. And I've saved these, this tank for the very last one on my water change cycle. And then every single time I dip my siphon into the coral dip, just like our cross-contamination prevention video shows. So this is the only tank in the entire house that has any planaria. So, we got to get rid of it though. We don't want to risk this getting into one of the other tanks or anything like that. And we don't want to risk when we sell these plants that they get into somebody else's tanks at all. So we're going to open up a package that I got from my buddy Chaz at Elevate Shrimp. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what we do to prevent these guys from coming in into your tanks. And if they do happen to come into your tank, what to do and how to get them out. All right, so we got our package from Chaz at Elevate Shrimp. Cut it open. Woo! We got a coaster. Well, we got some turbo boosters for the sponge filters. I'm gonna go see what that is. Oh, it's the other part to the booster. So we'll do another video on these or Perhaps I'll fit these into this video as well for him. And then we've got... Some uh, sweet treats, some uh, shrimp food for the Neos outside. And then what this video is all about is the no planaria. This is what we've always used to get rid of planaria and to treat all of our plants with. Like I mentioned before, I didn't treat that plant before I threw it in the tank. That's why we have the issue, but I kind of did it on purpose. So with all of our plants that we got from our auction in the last video, we're going to treat those with this no planaria, and then we're going to also treat the tank as well. So now that we got the plants that we got from last Monday's auction, it's now Thursday. So I kind of put the plants through the same amount of stress they would take if it, as if they went through priority mail. Now they can absolutely take that stress plus the stress that you're going to treat them with. So this isn't really something to worry about. Um, however, I would not do this really if the plants showed any signs of melting or anything like that. All of these plants held up quite well. So they're perfectly fine to be able to be dipped. If you can't dip them though, you can't put them into a shrimp tank maybe quarantine them by doing a dry start or something else if you have severe melting before you want to do this. But if you're going to just jump right into it, I've got a shoebox container of water, 
sometimes I'll usually do about uh, two gallons in a five gallon bucket. The no planaria is one scoop treats 50 liters of water or just over 13 gallons. So for 10 gallon tanks, we use kind of like a skimpy scoop or two skimpy scoops for uh, a 20 gallon, but just barely skimpy, not, not like barely a, a any at all. I'm talking almost a full scoop. Um, you don't want to overkill or anything like that. What they don't tell you about planaria is it kills single cell organisms and your bacteria in your filter is also a single cell organism. So this is going to take a hefty toll on your filtration, uh, colonized bacteria and stuff like that. So kind of take that into effect on how much you dose for Hydra and stuff like that. You could use a half a scoop for 10 gallons. Uh, that usually works on the first dose for Hydra. However, with Planaria, sometimes it takes two or three doses. So uh, to kind of get right to it with the plants, I kind of just overdo it. So even though this isn't 50 liters of water, I'm gonna put three scoops into this container just so I don't have to do three treatments or, or wait the full 24 hours. I'm just gonna let these soak overnight. And there's a key reason why I'm going to do it overnight. Uh, this stuff breaks down in, in any kind of light at all. So if you're going to do it during the day, try and black out the tank as much as you can. If not, just do it at nighttime. Uh, that way you get the full strength and the most benefit from dosing your tank. Um, check the next day, let it run, don't turn the lights on. I usually let it go a full 24 hours until I check to see if there's any worms. Um, if I can't see any worms, usually I'll do like a 50% water change and then do it again if I do see worms. However, I kind of rely on the first treatment to work. I do not want to tackle that tank more than I have to. If you can, get all of the shrimp out of the tank because it does tackle and take a toll on that beneficial bacteria in the filter so sometimes your tank goes through another cycle so if you can move the shrimp however if you can't you really want to try to use the least amount as possible so if the shrimp weren't in the tank though I would just dose three days in a row but the the worms are kind of really easy to find at nighttime they tend to crawl towards the surface a lot so Check the tanks 24 hours. If you dose at nighttime, it gives you a good time again to go check to see if there's any worms. But when you're dosing for plants, I'm not worried about the beneficial bacteria. So we're gonna go with overkill. Just try to get rid of anything that we possibly can. This is probably gonna kill all of the snails that are on it as well. It won't really get the snail eggs. Uh, so you, you'll probably still get snails if you're using this to treat for snails. However, only in eggs and sometimes I've had it kill all of them. If you're trying to kill the snail eggs, maybe just double up and do six scoops. The scoops are kind of hefty, so there's a lot of powder that goes into it. So I've got three scoops there. One was way over packed. It's uh, safe and biodegradable, so if it gets on your hands or anything like that, I'm not too worried. That's why I didn't wear gloves or anything like that. And then I'm just gonna kinda grab the horn work. And add the horn work into the container and then use the horn work to kinda stir up the no planaria, but at the same time, it's gonna work it in. You got the leaves in your tank, Darren, but it's gonna mix up all of this. It's probably from a pond outside. That's a good way to tell if you you got outdoor plants or not. You got leaves, I can guarantee you, this came from a pond, not a tank. So definitely wanna make sure we're gonna treat this. I actually, now that I see the, the leaves, I'm probably gonna dose, uh, another treatment tomorrow night or let it run for an extra day. It's also got duckweed in it, so I'm gonna have to sift through that and try to remove all of that. 
so we don't get that into any of our tanks as well. But now the Nilplan area is fully submerged all of the corn wort. I'm gonna get my bag of willow moss. And I don't wanna mix this up with the other moss. So instead of just putting it in, I'm just gonna fill up the bag itself with water that's already been mixed up and just kind of hang it on the side. Do the same for the peacock. Just kind of have a bag of water sitting in a tub of water, but it's all right. It's going to keep it all together, keep all the water in it stop it from leaking or anything like that. I'll put this up so my dogs can't get to it or anything like that and the kids won't be able to. And then I'm gonna go wash my hands. I know it's biodegradable and safe, but I'm still gonna get it off my hands as soon as possible. All right, so back at the tank now, I've got a cup of RO water mixed with my two almost full scoops of the Nilplanaria. Now this helps mixes it up thoroughly so that way when I add it to the tank, it doesn't all clump up, and then I have to mix it in with the tank water inside the tank. I don't like to do that. This will help it get throughout the entire tank, spread throughout, so that way, every nook and cranny where the no planaria could be, make sure I get it all out of the cup. So that will just seep into every little nook and cranny of the tank, even down in the substrate where the no planaria will hide out during the day. Now the only thing left to do is to turn off the light, and I can't do that without pausing the video. All right, and then you want complete and total darkness, so that way this will work to its potential, and it won't degrade in the light or anything like that. So you gotta turn off the light, and then hopefully by the time the sun's up, all those worms are gone. So the plants have been soaking now for 24 hours. I'm gonna go ahead and let them soak through the night. And then tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and soak these in some RO water real quick. Rinse them off again in some tap water. I can see some scoot still swimming around in the water. So hopefully all of that is gone in the morning. If not, I'll probably let these guys go until I don't see any movement left. I might even go ahead and throw in another dose of no planaria. And the only reason why is because these are probably in an outdoor pond or something like that where you just really didn't care about them. But now that I've seen them and everything like that, I'm gonna take extra precautions, soak these a little bit longer, but all I wanted to get at is when they're done soaking, rinse them off in some RO water or some tap water just to get that no planaria off before you go ahead and throw these into your tank. But after the good rinse, they're good to go. You can plant them, attach them to wood or whatever you got to do. They're 100% shrimp safe after they've soaked in this for three days for sure. All right, so back to the Blue Dream tank. I had a towel covering the light for most of the day. That way, none of the light penetrated any of the no planaria and dissolved it faster. You could do like garbage bags on the side or something to totally block it out to make it even more effective. However, it's just not needed as long as you dose it at nighttime. It gets that full eight hours or so where it's complete and total darkness and the no planaria can kick right in. Uh, again, it's gonna kill some of the snails and probably won't kill all of them with just one dose so you'll get a few fallen soldiers here and there but uh, the remaining of the snails will be uh, there so they can repopulate and replenish the ones that perished in the treatment however all of the worms and anything like that seem to have disappeared I don't see any nematodes or anything swimming around so all of the single-celled organisms are definitely out of the equation. I don't need to dose this tank again. The outbreak really wasn't 
uh, extreme. There was only a few worms that I could ever see at the, uh, one given point. If I was overfeeding and the population really was out of hand, you might need to dose it two or three times. However, uh, I'm gonna keep a close eye on the tank. It'll still remain the last tank in my rotation until I go months without seeing any signs of the no planaria, uh, of the planaria, sorry. I'm gonna say no planaria now whenever, whenever I talk about it. So the worms are eradicated. The only thing left to do is to do a 90% water change. This is gonna get rid of all the harmful chemicals that are still damaging the bacteria in your filter. So the 90% water change is gonna help get your tank back on track. Again, it's probably gonna go through like a little mini cycle. So as long as you don't overfeed, you remove any dead shrimp if you had any. Uh, however, most of the time with one dose, your shrimp will be fine. As long as you don't overfeed, you won't cause any issues. Again, the no planaria is not really deadly to the shrimp. It's more of, it kills all the single cell organisms, including the bacteria in your filter. So until that bacteria colonizes, it can't really control the ammonia issues and whatnot that could come from overfeeding. So avoid overfeeding just maybe one or two times a week until you feel like your cycle has kicked back in with the filter. So after 30 days, you can go back to life how it normally was. So that is how you take care of your planaria problem or hydra. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get those future alerts. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below. Have a good night.